Hi, I'm Greenway. Uh, I am here with my third uh, Wool Along video. Um, if you haven't heard of this before, uh, this is a uh, Wool Along similar to a Stitch Along uh, that is hosted by myself and Bonnie Log Cabin Stitcher. Hey Bonnie! Uh, this is my third video regarding the wool. Um, today I have a couple small projects I'd like to show as well as some wool news. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank everybody for joining in the Wool Along. Um, it officially started on June 1st, which was a couple days ago, and I have seen bunches of beautiful projects, um, some already completed, uh, because wool projects are very, very fast, especially if they're small projects. They can be completed within a couple days, so I've seen some beautiful completed projects as well as projects that are being started. I've seen some beautiful wool shopping, uh, which is totally awesome. Um, I wanted to let you know uh, a few different things uh, regarding um, some places that you can uh, pick up wool as well as wool projects, places that I haven't mentioned previously. But first, uh, let me get to my um, couple little finishes that I've had since I saw you last week. Uh, one of which, the first one, I did show on my floss tube video, but I'm going to briefly reshow here since it is a wool project. And it's from the book by uh, Maggie Bonanami, known as uh, Pure and Simple. There are many, many beautiful projects in here. This one is called Blossoming. And basically, it's a little pouch. It's a little pouch. Um, she said you could use it for maybe going shopping at a flea market or to a retreat, put your ID in there or a little cash, and off you go. Um, I decided not to finish it in that fashion. Um, instead of this um, leather strap, um, I looked through my stash and found that I had a coil of old rusty wire um, that I had purchased a long time ago from a shop that has since closed and um, I dug it out and when I was uncoiling the wire it made this natural little loop in it and I thought excellent that's going to be perfect for finishing my little my little bag so here is my version of blossoming um, it's a little bit different colors. This is linen here in the background, and the back is linen. Um, I did line the bag with some cotton fabric. Uh, this is a working button. I'll open it up in just a second. But as you can see, the rusty wire made this little loopy doopy in the middle, and I added a couple of rusty bells and then just a little bit of a ribbon. Um, this ribbon, I don't know if anybody's familiar with this ribbon. I am not sure if this is the type of ribbon that Lady Dot Creates uses or not, but this is called Snug Hug Ribbon. Uh, I think I bought it on Amazon, and it comes in like a humongous variety of colors. Um, it, it's, I think it's a silk ribbon. It's very lightweight, kind of a little bit, it has a little bit of a shine to it, but I liked this brown color since it kind of uh, is a bit of a prim look and so um, I wanted to put another loop on here so that I could hang this in uh, various spots that might be bigger than this little loop here so so there you go oh let me open it up here quickly and I'll show you that um, it actually is lined with some lining fabric uh, there inside so so there you go that was my uh, first little finish over this past week uh, regarding my wool and it was lots of fun it was lots of fun um, and then the second one I'm going to show you I actually don't have a pattern for um, this was inspired uh, by one of the patterns I gave away last time around from under the wool and willow it was in her winter book and it was a bouquet um, made up of little wool hearts um, on sticks and um, so I thought to myself hmm can I do something with that idea? And so I've made two, but I actually would like to make more. I was thinking of other um, shapes that you could make and, and you could put them together um, as a bouquet, maybe in a, either in a vase, or I thought um, if you made the branches a little shorter, you could put it together in a little um, creamer. 
Um, or I thought about, uh, which are so cute, and I think I have one somewhere in the house, but I'm not sure, um, in one of those old-fashioned milk bottles, which I think would just be awesome. Um, so I have some ideas in my head. I might end up making some more in some other um, shapes. Uh, the two I made, one is a heart, one is kind of a flower shape. I have to say I took this pattern, the flower shape and the heart shape, out of one of my uh, Rebecca Smith books. Um, and since it was Memorial Day weekend, I decided to kind of do a red, white, and blue thing going on. But of course, you could do this in multitude of colors. So, so here's my first one. Um, this is kind of a navy blue wool. Maybe you can see it about there. It's a navy blue wool. Um, again, this is a Rebecca Smith pattern flower. Um, and then I put a little red wool um, to tie at the bottom. And then, of course, it's just on a long stick. I left mine relatively long because I didn't quite know exactly what I was going to do with them at this point. And as I said, I just made um, two of them up to this time, but I'm thinking I might make a few more. They were very quick and easy. Um, you just have to cut out two pieces, and, and I used the blanket stitch to uh, uh, stitch them together, and I just stuffed it with a little bit of polyfill and um, stuck it on the stick. Um, I really didn't attach it too much in any way. I just wrapped the thread around there and then I wrapped this around and that's really it. So, so it's probably fairly precarious, but, um, but it seems to be holding up pretty well. Um, so there's the flower one I made. And then the second one I did um, kind of in a whitish grayish uh, herringbone type wool um, is I did a heart. So um, so there we go. It, again, I left it relatively long on the stick because I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with them, but I'm very happy with how they came out. Um, really, this is something you could just do freehand. Um, I was thinking, I have written down, I was thinking of um, star shape uh, would be really cool. I think like a bouquet of all stars uh, would be awesome. Um, I thought about a diamond shape. Um, I thought about circles. I guess they would look like little lollipops if somebody wanted to make a bouquet maybe for their granddaughter's bedroom. Uh, you could do a bunch of bright colored wools uh, in little circles uh, looking like little lollipops I think would be awesome. So uh, ideas are endless. I, I mean ideas are endless but um, again I just love throwing out ideas to people that they might um, grab on and give it a try uh, because again this is very very quick and easy um, and again you know, you wouldn't need very big pieces of wool by any means uh, to do these. So um, those were my two projects. Um, I did get started on my sampler project. Um, and uh, this is quite the large project. I think I didn't realize how big it was. I feel like I'm, I'm doing a hands across the sea sampler in wool because it's very long. It's going to be 42 inches long. And I have everything cut out. I, I think I've showed that in the past. And uh, yesterday I started attaching it to the utility fabric. Now, two things. One, I use um, heat and bond. And so um, usually I will um, iron it onto the fabric. Well, I have to say the heat and bond did not want to adhere to the utility fabric. I really couldn't get it to adhere very well. And the more I ironed it, the more flat my wool got. So then I said, okay, well, maybe I'll just pin it on. And I have to say, I'm not real crazy about pinning it on because it can kind of shift a little bit as you're stitching it. And um, also, I tend to stab myself <laughs> with the pin, um, and so I get a little frustrated with it. And then the second issue is that the utility fabric does have a little bit of a heft to it. And I have to say, after stitching a couple of them on, my wrist was really getting um, very sore. And, you know, with the amount of stitching we all do, uh, you know, hand stitching with our cross stitch, as well as um, if you're embarking on these projects, I was afraid I was going to start to have issues uh, with my hand. So I'm a little hesitant to continue on the utility fabric because it's so large that it's going to be a lot of stitching. So um, today, actually, after I'm done filming, I'm thinking about heading up to um, kind of a local quilt shop. It's, it's about 30 minutes uh, from here just to see if they have any background I might like, maybe a flannel or something like that, that would be easier on my hand and wrist. Um, so I haven't 100% decided. I do like how it looks on the utility fabric, but I'm wondering if that fabric might be better for a smaller project um, than a 42-inch 
project because uh, it is quite big. But I will show you what I did attach so far. And as I said, I think it looks good. Um, I do think one of my urns shifted a little bit, but again, it's supposed to be primitive, so I'm, I'm not really caught up in that. But um, here it is. Uh, here we are. I've attached the two urns. I've attached the two urns, and I did attach the, the cream color wool and the door. I have not attached the, um, the grass yet, and um, this morning when I got up and looked at it, I thought to myself, hmm, I think that one urn is a little higher than the other urn. And um, and as I said, my wrist was kind of sore. So, um, and you can see I have all the fabric kind of clipped on with some quilting clips um, there. Um, and yeah, and maybe, maybe part of it too is maybe I don't have the correct needle. Um, Kathy, um, who had barred me this uh, book from another place in time by Maggie Benonymy, was saying that she uses a very sharp um, chenille needle, which actually I don't have any of those when I may pick up some today uh, if they have them uh, at the store I'm going to. Um, so that could be part of my problem too, that I don't have the right needle. So before I give up on it, uh, I'm gonna see if I can get, get a different needle and just see if it's a little bit easier to get through the fabric before I, I give up on using the utility fabric for this project. Um, so, so for right now, it's a little bit on hold depending on what I can find today or uh, maybe tomorrow, we'll see. So um, I do love it, I do. Um, oh, the other thing I wanted to mention um, is that I generally, for my wool, I generally do the buttonhole stitch and I think that's because I mainly have been doing Rebecca Smith's projects and she does buttonhole. Well, um, I decided to give it a try, just like everybody out there is giving giving things a try here. I decided to uh, give a try to Maggie Bonanimi's, uh whip stitch. And I have to say, it is much faster. Um, I still don't quite have a rhythm. I wanna get a rhythm where I'm just working on the, the um, front side of the fabric, um, kind of going uh, in and out in the same motion. And the way she does hers is her stitches are are lined up parallel, where when I do like my drums and I do hand stitching around the drum, mine are kind of on a slant. Um, and I have that rhythm down, but um, I can't seem to figure out a rhythm where they're straight. Although of course I could do it slanted, but I kind of like the straight look. So I'm still kind of working on, on finding a good rhythm on that. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, if anybody has any tips or tricks for me, um, I'm open to it. I'm open to it for sure. So, um, so that's been my ventures um, over the past week. Um, a couple quick things though um, I want to uh, talk about. Um, one is Susan Stanley. Um, you have to watch her last video because she did a class with Maggie Benonymy in person. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Uh, that is totally and completely amazing. Um, she shows the two projects that uh, Maggie presented. They are out of this world. One of them looks huge and beautiful. So please go um, and check her out. And um, I'm gonna say the same thing on this channel that I said on my Floss Dude channel. Um, if anybody hears of any classes that she's giving, let me know. I did hear that she does have a shop, but it sounds like it's only open by appointment in Lexington, Missouri by the name of the Purple Turnip. And um, I know in her books, I think some of the backgrounds are from her shop. Um, and it sounds like she also lives in a very old house too. And um, her shop is vintage also. So um, I would absolutely love to see it. And I, <laughs> I am so excited because um, I signed up, I haven't mentioned this um, yet because I keep forgetting, but I signed up for a retreat um, down in Missouri um, at Quilters Station and it's um, a cross-stitching retreat so I won't go into a lot of detail about it, but the point of mentioning it on the Wool Channel is that I looked on Google Maps and the site of the retreat is about 30 minutes south of the site of the Purple Turnip. So I'm already thinking in my mind, um, uh, this is in September, if I hadn't said that, this is in September, I'm already thinking in my mind, is it possible that in advance I could set up an appointment um, so that I could go up and um, see her studio slash shop and um, 
try not to fangirl too bad, <laughs> but um, I, I, I just can't believe that it's so close and that I'm going to be down there. I've never been to Missouri. Um, the fact that I even signed up for this retreat was way out of my character. Um, I, I just did it spur of the moment. It mainly signed up because one of, there's going to be four designers there, but one of them is Blackbird and, and that is my absolute favorite. So um, if I actually got to meet um, the Blackbird ladies and Maggie Bonanami all in one trip, I think that would be like heaven on earth. So if anybody out there is going to the Quilter Station retreat, please let me know. Let me know. I'm going by myself. Um, so uh, I would love to um, to meet anybody out there, maybe sit together at the table, something along those lines. Um, maybe you want to come with me to see Maggie, if, if I can possibly arrange that. Uh, I am, uh, already have that on my mind. Okay, um, so places, uh, more places I discovered for patterns in wool. One, um, of course, is Under the Woolen Willow uh, from Michelle. Um, she now has beginner kits on her website. Uh, one of them um, is a mug rug kit, and one of them is a pin cushion kit. They are both very, very reasonably priced. Please go check them out. Um, in addition, Michelle told me that she was able to find some um, crafting books. I don't know specifically if they were Maggie Bonanami, but it sounded like they were wool uh, design books through her library too. So again, I'm going to mention, check out your libraries. You might be able to find these books there and at least peruse through them um, and uh, maybe do some projects because some of them, as I said, are very, very quick. Um, in addition, um, she messaged me and said uh, there's a website by the name of www.winterberrycabin and that's spelled winter w-i-n-t-e-r and berry is b-e-r-r-y winterberrycabin.com and they um, have uh, wool applique kits as well as wool and they're going out of business I think they're from Vermont, it sounds like, and some of their patterns are $2.50 up to maybe $4, and it looks like their wool they have reduced maybe 20, 25%, somewhere in that range, and oh my goodness, they have like 25 pages of wool, I mean, colors galore, so um, please go and check them out. Again, it's www.winterberry, W-I-N-T-E-R, B-E-R-R-Y, cabin, C-A-B-I-N, it's all one word, dot com. Uh, check them out. Um, and then the last one that my friend Kathy uh, sent to me uh, was the fact that the Woolen Needle um, in Iowa also has a website, or if you live in Iowa, um, check out the Woolen Needle. I know that, um, I think, Michelle Farm Girl and Lisa Kindred Stitcher and Lori Textilist uh, recently visited there because they do um, a stitching retreat at the Amana Colonies. Um, so um, if you check their their um, videos, I think they have uh, walkthroughs of the woolen needle. It looks gorgeous, of course. Um, and I didn't know they they actually have a website. So again, just another source um, for finding patterns and wool and kits. Um, so check that out too. Um, so let's see. I think the very last uh, thing I want to talk about is another giveaway. Yay! Um, thanks again. This is to Michelle at Under the Woolen Willow. She offered to give away one of her beginner kits for a mug rug. So um, I don't have it here. Michelle said I could just give her the name and she would mail it out directly uh, from her site. And so um, if you'd like to see it, just head over to Under the Woolen Willow on Etsy and you can also see all the other wonderful things she has there. Um, but if you would like to be entered into the giveaway, I will do the random um, comment generator like I did last time. And um, if you could just put in your comment, um, why don't you just put rug, R-U-G, let's make it easy. Just put rug in your comment and you'll be automatically entered. Um, I will draw it at, 
with my last my next wool video which I'm hoping will be anywhere from a week to two weeks um, next week might be a little bit busy for me but we'll see how it goes so I'm gonna say one to two weeks I'm not gonna give a specific date for this one because I don't know for sure when my next video will be um, but uh, go ahead and, and put your comment below and check out the little kit on Under the Wool and Willow that she'll be giving uh, giving away. And thank you again, Michelle, uh, for supporting um, our Wool Along um, for both myself and Bonnie uh, Log Cabin Stitcher. And um, again, uh, please jump over to uh, Bonnie's channel. Um, she just put out um, a regular floss tube, but she said... Um, this week, either today or tomorrow, she's going to be putting out another wool video. And she has so, again, a much deeper knowledge uh, than me and gives so many tips and tricks. So um, I feel like I'm, I'm a little bit more in the beginner category and she's definitely more in an advanced category. Um, so um, you get two perspectives, so maybe that helps. <laughs> um, so I hope everybody has an awesome day. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, this has been a very, very fun uh, adventure uh, to go along with uh, my cross-stitching. And um, the projects are just out of this world. And I will let you know uh, what I end up doing with my, um, my sampler, uh, whether I continue on the utility fabric or possibly change my background. Uh, we'll see how that goes, but I will keep you updated. Um, God bless. Have a lovely day. Take care. Bye.